Hey guys, welcome back to Cummins Repower Garage. I'm Steve Sanders, joined by Brittany Barella here. Uh, today we're going to talk about the front end accessory drive that's included with your new R2.8 turbo diesel and all the accessories uh, that are bolted to it. So this is a 12 volt system starting with a 120 amp alternator. That alternator is internally regulated, which means the only place that you have to interface with it is your charging post right here. We don't provide that cable, so you will need to run a high amp cable from your charging post to your battery. We recommend 800, at least an 800 uh, cold cranking amp battery to really give your starter enough juice, especially when you're starting in the cold and that grid heater is gonna come on and, and draw a lot of that current. Uh, speaking of your starter, we don't provide that starter circuit wiring either. So again, making sure you're choosing the right high amp wiring um, when you're wiring all that, all that in. Definitely refer to your installation manual to make sure you're getting all the specs and details right on both of those circuits. Next accessory that we're going to talk about is our power steering pump. That is an M16 banjo fitting on that high pressure side. That fitting should be readily available in any aftermarket catalog or parts resource. Um, and then you'll probably need some custom power steering lines to interface with any steering box that you're going to use. The last component that can mount on your kind of major bracket over here is your AC compressor. So it, the engine does not come with an AC compressor. There is a Cummins part that you can purchase and bolt directly to this bracket. Uh, refer to parts.cummins.com and or cumminsrepower.com for different options on AC compressors, on that mega bracket itself, and any other FIAD that you may want to uh, swap on here. The other option is a lot of aftermarket suppliers um, will be offering components as well if you run, want to run different accessories or different brackets to mount them on there. The last little bit is your serpentine belt does not come installed on the engine, so you will have to install that uh, if you're using all of our accessories. If you have decided to go through the aftermarket or through parts.cummins.com and switch up your bracket, switch up your accessories, you will have to source a new belt that will fit your configuration. So the last accessory on the front of the engine is not mounted to that mega bracket. It's actually mounted to the cylinder head itself. Uh, this is the cam-driven vacuum pump. So uh, we'll go over and look at this Jeep installation and show you why that's important. So this is a Jeep TJ. The Jeep TJ originally had a gas engine. Gas engines have a vacuum pull through the intake system. Diesel engines do not. So you either have to have an electric uh, vacuum pump if you do some kind of diesel swap, uh, a gear-driven vacuum pump. In our case, we have a cam-driven vacuum pump. So what we wanted to do was provide an option that allowed you from the factory not to have to convert to a hydro boost system. So a lot of diesels, uh, like your big diesel pickup trucks, our 6.7 powered trucks, et cetera, have hydro boost uh, brakes rather than this vacuum brake. For the vintage vehicle that we're targeting, not only were they vacuum brakes, but a lot of those interior climate control features were vacuum actuated. So you can't really get away with just doing a hydro boost conversion and then uh, not have vacuum anywhere. You've got to have vacuum. So we thought that was pretty handy uh, to include in this. Uh, really what we did is we kept all the uh, factory interior hard vacuum lines, any check valves that were in place, and we ran a line straight to our vacuum pump, and away we go. So I think that about covers it for this edition of Cummins Repower Garage. Thank you very much, and stay tuned for more episodes. See you next time.